It also gives me great pleasure to be able to welcome you here to Berlin on, on behalf of ICD. And it is a very special occasion we have commemorating the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Those of us who have been for a long time in, in, in politics remember very well when this happened in 1989. And we remember very well the years before it. I can remember when I was at a meeting once in, in, in Britain in 1981, a prominent professor from West, West Germany said, I believe that the Berlin Wall will fall maybe in 2013. That was the first year I have heard mentioned about the fall of the Berlin Wall. And uh, somebody thought this was rather optimistic. I was present at the funeral of Chernenko in 1985 when Gorbachev took power in the Soviet Union. And there was a sort of hope in the air. And there was more hope in the air when Gorbachev and Reagan came to Iceland in 1986. And I can also remember when I came to Berlin in January 1989, nobody was talking about the fall of the Berlin Wall. People didn't believe that this was, would only happen one year later. And I came again in January 1990, and then this had happened. And why did this happen? Of course, it was because of politics, partly. People like Willy Brandt, Solidarity, Lachvalesa in, in Poland, and uh, many others. But of course, it was mostly the people who were fighting for freedom, the people who were trying to build bridges. There's a new book named The Collapse of Mary Elise Sarotte, and she writes an article in the New York Times today. And there it is stated that first we fought for our freedom, and then because of that, the wall fall. There were, of course, many provincial actors like uh, journalists, like students, like pastors, like housewives, and so on, who met every week here in Berlin to fight for their freedom. And of course, this fall of the Berlin Wall was a great victory. And the German people showed great solidarity. And even today, they are paying a special tax 5.5% of income, and that will be paid until 2019 to, to even out the differences between West and East. And now the GDP in, in the East is about 66% or two-thirds of the GDP in the West. We who didn't believe at that time that this was about to happen, we actually thought, like one book was written, that when it happened, that this was, in a way, an end of, of history. But that didn't happen. We have many walls today, and we have many differences to solve. We see the differences mostly in the Middle East, in Israel, Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, where people are killed just for their culture, just for what they believe in, what they are born in. We see the injustice in many states in Africa, countries like Nigeria, Sudan. We see it in Afghanistan, Pakistan. We see it in Korea, between North and South. And we even see it in, in Russia, in Belarus, in Europe, in Belarus, and now tensions, growing tensions with, with, with Russia. And there are also 
problems in the Balkans, and even in a country like Hungary, which is a part of the European Union. So there are many <clears throat> things that are to be worked for and has to be solved, and there are many more walls to be broken, and there are many more bridges to be built. We can learn from the history of the fall of the Berlin Wall. We can learn from the people who showed great courage, wisdom, and foresight. Their experience is needed in the continuous work to break down barriers and build bridges. We have to answer the question how we can help. We, like others, are needed. And let us do our best to continue to build bridges between countries, between cultures, between religions, and between people.